we've got a few different AI helpers that are available now, more than just ChatGPT. First of all, there's ChatGPT 3.5, there's ChatGPT using GPT-4, there's Bard, which can now code, Microsoft's Bing Chat, and there's Open Assistant. I wanna see how well they generate code, how well they do code completion, how well they can do bug detection, who's gonna be better at API documentation generation, and which one is gonna do code refactoring better. Here's my source material. I have a little website with all the courses here and all the metadata about the courses is actually just a JSON file. I called it courses.json, so I know what the heck it is. All right, I have my file here. I'm gonna create a main.py file here for Python, and let's indicate that this is gonna be chat GPT-4. Now, I'm doing Python just because it's easy, but it's irrelevant what language you're using. If you really need it in another language, you can just ask one of these models to translate it for you. I've done a video on that. We're gonna start out real simple here with uh, this one in this corner. We've got GPT-4, and I'm gonna say, create a Python script to parse a JSON file and extract the course titles. I didn't give it any kind of schema. We're dealing with JSON unstructured data. It's just gonna have to figure out what a course title is. And I gave it an example of the structure. So this is just one piece of JSON data, supposed to figure out the rest. Let's uh, see what happens here. Okay, it's done. Let's copy this code and let's paste it into our little file here and run it. Look at that, it did it, nice work. Does GPT 3.5 still work on something like this? Let's check it out. I bet it'll do it and actually did it really fast. Let's see if it's correct. I'm gonna copy the results of GPT 3.5, paste it in new file here. Uh, it does look a little bit different, but it should still work. And yeah, it spits it out just fine. We're good to go. Next, we'll try Open Assistant, which is the open source alternative, the free alternative to ChatGPT. Here it is. Paste that in there and submit. What? What is this? To get all courses on Pluralsight using a PowerShell script? No. I did clearly say Python script and I provided a JSON file. What are you talking about? This is, I'm not even gonna, no. Actually, certainly interesting that they're scraping the Pluralsight website for course names, but they're not at all what I asked for. Moving on, let's have a look at how Bing does. And I think Bing is gonna do pretty much the same as GPT because it's based on GPT. But instead of precise, I'm gonna do creative to see what we can come up with. Okay, it gave me something. Let's see if I can easily copy the result. There we go. Main Bing.py. Oh, what is all this? Oh, oh, it copied the entire answer, not just the code. Okay, we'll have to fix that up. Not as convenient, but still doable. And it works, great. Bard, it's your turn. Let's see what you can do. Now, initially Bard came out without any coding capabilities, so now that it has them, I hope that um, they're decent. <laughs> What the heck? This is funny because look at this. These are native script courses and here it gave us the code for it. But what's interesting is here's an example of the output of the script. Angular 2 Fundamentals, Angular 2 Advanced, Ionic. I don't have any mention of Ionic in there. It's uh, You're hallucinating, Bard. All right, this looks pretty good. These aren't too difficult, but the formatting kind of sucks. I gotta admit, look at this. It gave me an array of strings instead of just printing it out. I guess I'll accept that, even though it's annoying. I specifically asked for the course titles and not for an array of course titles. That's fine. So for code generation, I'm gonna have to give a point to chat GPT and Bing. Bard doesn't get a point for this and Open Assistant gets a negative point for this. No, just doesn't get a point. Code completion is Next. From now on, I'm just gonna stick with GPT-4. This is very simple stuff, it shouldn't matter. Here's my prompt, it's pretty long right now. I think I might just uh, shorten it just a tad bit and take out some of the unnecessary text because some of these AIs might not be able to handle it. And just to help it out, I'm gonna clean this up a tad bit here. There we go. Here's our script that actually worked. This is from ChatGPT, and I'm going to just remove a line. Let's remove this line right here. This is now an incomplete script. I'm gonna ask each one of our AIs to complete it. So let's copy this, GPT-4, and boom. Okay, we got some code. Let's run it, and it works. Wonderful. Should we try Open Assistant again? Give it a little bit of a context? All right, I'm gonna try it again because I also shortened the prompt. Let's try this. Hey, good, this may actually work. What is it doing? Going a little bit off the rails and doing some unnecessary stuff, but let's see if this works. It does have a nice little code window that you can copy. That's convenient. Pasted the code and let's run it. Nothing, no result. And I'm not gonna troubleshoot it because that's not what this is about. I know I can do it. Can you do it? That's the question. Bard, okay, it gave me a script. Let's give it a shot. 
Main barred, paste this. It looks different than the previous one. It works. And this one is better because, well, we based it on the chat GPT result. So all it needed to do was complete it. And the result is better because it actually gave me the titles. Bing. I expect this will work just fine, except copying and pasting from it is a little bit of a pain. There it is. And working like a charm. Everybody gets points except for Open Assistant. Next is bug detection. Now for this one, I thought it might be interesting to have the output of Open Assistant fed in and find its bug. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that. Here's my prompt. Locate any logic errors in the following Python code snippet that parses a JSON file and extracts the course titles. The script is, and this is gonna be Open Assistant's output from last time that didn't work. All right, cleaned it up a little bit. Let's put this through chat GPT. It found a logic error, or maybe it did, I don't know. Here's the corrected code, nice. Let's copy that and run it. It is different. Oh, that didn't work. It's getting the titles, but it's not printing them out. I probably need to be a little bit more specific and say, locate any logic errors and then print the course titles. Let's do that. Here we go, GPT-4. It's giving me the revised version of the code. Ooh, that's not looking so good. Okay, nope, that's not working. <laughs> Let's see if Bard can do any better. I don't think I see any print statements anywhere. How could this possibly work, folks? No. Ugh, what am I doing wrong with my prompts? Let's try Open Assistant again. Of course, Open Assistant is not gonna pick on its own code. It says, there doesn't seem to be any obvious logical errors. Yeah, it's not doing it, not doing it. Let's see if the creative Microsoft Bing can do it. No, that's not gonna do it either, folks. There is a confusion here because the original Open Assistant generation produced this right here. It's iterating over product details for some reason, which is just beyond me. It made that up and it's now confusing all the other AIs because they're looking at that and saying, well, maybe I should be looking at product details, but no, no, the title is up here. It's in the root object. I could be more helpful, but I'm not gonna. They all fail this one. Let's generate some documentation. I'm disgusted. Here's what I got. Create an API documentation for the following Python code snippet that parses a JSON file and prints the course titles. Document the relevant parts of the JSON object as well. All right, off you go, GPT-4. Let's see what you got. Whoa. <laughs> it's doing the formatting too in Markdown, nice. This is what it's really good at, these tools. They're gonna change documentation the way we document stuff forever. Who, oh, I hate writing documentation, I absolutely hate it. This is a thing of beauty. At least if it's not gonna be good at code, it can be good at something and that's documentation. I love that. Look at that, function, extract course titles, description of the function, the syntax, parameters, returns, usage examples, all this stuff that we're too lazy to do. Come on, admit it. You know you're too lazy to do this. Here's the course object. Everything is described. Unique identifier for the course. Nice. A title of the course. Wow. It's basically just making these assumptions, but they're right. <laughs> That's amazing. Product object. This is really cool. Nice work. Open assistant. You haven't been doing so well lately, but let's see if you can do this task. Well, folks, we've got a little bit of a ways to go with open assistant. It was a valiant attempt and it's still in progress. It's still in the works, but you know, it's got a ways to go. This is what it came up with. All right, bing, let's be creative. I like that. I don't know what it's doing. Maybe it's being a little bit too creative right now, but this is not what I wanted. It's doing inline documentation, so comments, also useful. Not what I asked for, but you know, has its uses. Bard, your turn to shine. Let's see what you got. Sure, here's the API documentation. Uh, okay, I, I'm guessing that's Markdown, but it's not actually formatted here. I would have to copy it out of here and format it myself, and there's like different parts I have to copy. It's okay, but I guess it's a pain. The relevant parts of the JSON object, that's useful. That's exactly what we need. Notes, this section is all messed up. Ah, uh, sorry, Bard, uh, that's, that's not good. One point for Chad GPT, zero points for the rest of them. One more task to do, and that's refactoring. Here's the prompt. The following Python code snippet parses a JSON file and prints the course titles. Suggest refactoring improvements for the following Python code to enhance testability. I gave it the code that actually worked. Really not too much you can do here. And uh, of course that sample of the JSON right there. Let's see what ChatGPT does. So it's got some explaining to do. Create a function to load the JSON separately. Use type hints. Include input validation. Huh. 
With these changes, we can now test the extract course titles function. So it's showing you how you can actually test it. We can also add input validation to the load JSON file function. Here's an example. Beautiful. Now, if we try to load a non-JSON file or a file that contains invalid JSON, the function will raise value error. Wow, that's really cool. Let's copy that code. That's GPT-4, paste that in there. First of all, let's just make sure it works. It doesn't work anymore. What happened? Well, in this case, it's operating under the assumption that my code that I gave it worked, but apparently it doesn't have any print statements either. So that didn't work either. I'm going to go back to my original that actually was working. There we go. That one works. All right. Let's try this one more time. I'm already impressed with what GPT-4 can do with ChatGPT, uh, with all the different explanations and the code snippets and everything is nicely organized and color coded. So I'm sure that this iteration will do just fine, but I wanted to leave that part in there because if you give it a certain input, it's gonna act on that input. And we've seen that throughout our testing today. It's not gonna automatically fix it for you just because I said that this piece of code prints doesn't mean that that piece of code actually prints. Here's the refactored code though. Let's try the refactored code and see. As you can see, there's a lot more functions here because each function can now be individually tested. So this should be good to go. Hopefully it works and let's take a look. And it does, beautiful. Open assistant, we're gonna give you one more chance here to redeem yourself. Let's see if you can refactor existing code. Oh my God, what is this thing doing? It's going to HTTPS myapp.com to fetch data. Ooh. I'm sorry. All right, Bing. Let's go with Bing. And we're gonna be as creative with our refactoring as possible. I can try to help you with refactoring your Python code. Here's some suggestions. Use a context manager to handle opening and closing JSON files. Use a try accept block to catch errors. Very different output than GPT-4. It might be valuable. I'm not checking it though. I wanna see if this works. Paste that in. It's certainly the longest bit of code that we've generated today. And it works. Very nice. It does split up the script into multiple multiple segments. It has some exception handling, so that's useful as well. And it's different than the ChatGPT version. They each have their own valuable part that they're adding here. And Bard, what does Bard do? Okay, look at that. Here's an example of a unit test for extract course titles. And this one went with the class-based approach, which is interesting. So it also split it up into multiple functions, similar to what ChatGPT did. Use a linter to check the code for style potential errors. So it's given us suggestions of what else we can can do besides what its output was and uh, let's see is this going to actually work I'm excited yes it works Bard did it everybody gets a point except for open assistant that's it for today folks if you like this video go ahead and give me a thumbs up thanks a lot for watching and I will see you next time